By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back at the Raging Bull series, the old school magic tournament held in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. We have reached round number three. And in round number three, we are going to look at Audun, who's on blue red fire and he's playing Malta who's on red green aggro so these are two really good decks fierce decks aggressive decks I mean we've got Sheevan Dragons on one side of the table and Kurt Apes and Scrip Sprites on the other side of the table so quick versus like a more mid-range plan I'm just excited to show you this matchup both players by the way are, are playing with a minimal black splash so demonic tutor mind twist Although I think Malta, by the way, is only playing with Mind Twist, but not with the Demonic Tutor. But more about that in the deck tech section of this video. Now, before I start with the deck tech section, I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to first go to the games, check out the deck tech section later or not at all. That's all up to you, of course. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below, because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the action. And in that same description, you can also find more information about the Raging Bull uh, series, the website of the Raging Bull series, and also about the rule set in this specific tournament. And you can find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And that's kind of important because uh, by becoming a patron of the show, you can also finance the show. You can become a supporter and you can help me to continue creating this content. So when you have time, please take a moment to have a look at patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and uh, yeah consider becoming a patron it already starts with just one dollar a month and it really helps a lot really helps me to continue making this content for you all uh, anyway now that you've been fully informed we are going to start with the deck tech section of this video I'm gonna start with the deck of Audu let's have a look at his blue red fire brew and here we see the deck of Audun, so a blue, red, fire, well, dominantly blue and red. We do have two black cards in this deck, Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. You know, the usual black splash, a lot of players do it for obvious reasons. Um, when we look at this deck, you know, let's start with the creature base on the left top side. We've got two Sheevan Dragons, three Granite Gargoyles, and four Suchis. Now, I love the Sheevans, you know, it's such an iconic card. Five, five flyer for six, and for one red, you can give it plus one, plus oh, which is super good later in the game. If your opponent doesn't have an answer to your Sheevan, it's pretty much game over for your opponent. Um, and then you have the Suchi, and the Suchi is extra good in Swedish old school because there's no mana burn. So Suchi already is really good at 4-4 for four, 4. Four, four. When it gets, for example, shattered in this format, then of course you get four colorless mana, but because there's no mana burn, there's no way that you take four points of damage. Um, then when we're looking at the rest of the deck, in the middle here we see that burn package, four bolts, two fireballs, two psionic blasts, and I think those bolts are really important for early on in the game because this deck is a little bit slower. It's not slow, but it's a little bit slower than Malta's deck because Malta's playing super aggressive. So what can you do the early game? Well, you can play your bolts. You can kind of kill those creatures, slow down your opponent, and as you drag the game into mid game, late game, then you're going to be dominant with your bigger creatures, with your powerful spells, with maybe a brain geyser, right? That's when you take over the game with a big fireball as a finisher. You know, so if you're out and you really kind of want to drag this into that mid game section. Now, uh, when we look on the right side of the deck, we see all the power, right? We see the Moxen, we see the Lotus, we see the Sol Ring. He also plays with the Felwer Stone. So there is ramp happening in this deck. It's not a slow deck, you know, because if he ramps up, he can pretty quickly play out the Suchi, like turn two or turn three. And then he already has a 4-4 body on the battlefield. He's also playing with uh, Blood Moons, which you may think, why is he playing with Blood Moons when he's playing with three colors himself? Well, actually, red is a very dominant color. So if he turns everything into red mana, it's not too bad. And look at his land base. He's playing with, let's see, one, two, three, four, five basic islands, right? So those basic islands remain basic islands. So no problem. I guess the only thing is when he has a Blood Moon out, it's going to be really hard for him to cast a Demonic Tutor or the Mind Twist. Of course, he still has the Mox Jet and the Black Lotus to produce black mana. But yeah, that's going to be a little bit tougher. But against some opponents, the Blood Moon does way more pain for the opponent than it does for Audun. And I wonder in this matchup if Audun's going to keep them in or not. Because, of course, his opponent is black, or sorry, is uh, green, red aggro, so doesn't need a lot of mana. Then again, you know, these aggro decks, they love their Pendlehavens, they love their factories, they love their mazes for the, for the combat shenanigans. 
So maybe he's going to keep them in. So that's going to be an interesting thing to keep an eye on what he's going to do after sideboarding. Uh, talking about sideboarding, we see a card there, uh, Pyrotechnics. It's really cool. Uh, it's a card that deals four damage, right? A card from Legend, Sorcery, four damage. And you can divide the damage any way you want. And remember, he is playing against the Weenie deck. So there could be a moment if he boards it in from the sideboard that he could use that to like kill two or three or sometimes even four creatures with this one card. That would be pretty epic. He's also playing with an Earthquake in the sideboard and a Triskele. And I think those two cards are definitely going to come in after sideboarding. Anyway, this is the deck of Audun, Red, Blue, Fire. And now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, the uh, Red, Green uh, Aggro deck by Malta. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Malta. So red green aggro also known as Malta weenie. Malta usually plays with these red green aggressive decks. In this case there's one other color in this deck that's a black card that's one mind twist in here. But we just see a lot of cheap creatures, a lot of damage cards and we see land removal in the form of ice storms. So I mean this deck can be pretty ruthless. I mean look at this top list there they're all creatures starting with one curd ape then we've got the uh, scavenger folks lanawar elves script sprites we've got the the dragonfly we've got the wailudi wolf we've got the argovian pixie so just a lot of cheaper creatures that obviously is going to play you know turn one turn two turn three just going to drop a lot of creatures and then maybe in the process there he's going to find an ice storm that he can cast quickly to kind of slow down his opponent uh, you know, maybe he's going to find a Sylvan Library that he can use to kind of refill his hand. And in the meanwhile, of course, he wants to attack and deal damage right from, you know, from the first start of the game. You know, this is an aggressive deck. It wants to go super fast, potentially finishing the game with a Lightning Bolt or a Chain Lightning, you know, and kind of get the win from there. What's interesting in this deck is that we only see two Giant Groves. We don't see any Berserks. We also uh, don't see any Crumbles. Usually when I'm thinking about land removal, because he is playing with Ice Storm, you're thinking, okay, you're going to play a little bit of the tempo game, then it's quite good to also have artifact removal in your deck like a crumble. On the other hand, you know, every card that you add that doesn't actually deal damage takes away from your A plan, because the A plan really is here, deal damage, deal damage, deal damage. Each card should be able to hurt your opponent. And I think that's what Malta has in the back of his mind when he's designing these decks. He's like, okay, Crumble is a really good card, but is it a good card in this specific deck, right? Uh, when we're looking at the lands, because the land base is very important in these decks, despite the fact that you only need a little bit of lands, you know? So you may think, why is lands important in here? Well, because of the Pendlehaven. There are three Pendlehavens in this deck for a reason. Remember, they're legendary lands, so you cannot have more than one. Uh, on the battlefield, but as soon as you lose a Pendlehaven, you want to be able to cast another one because it's so crucial in this deck. Most of the creatures in the deck of Malta can get the bonus from Pendlehaven. Remember, Pendlehaven, a land from Legends, you can tap it for a green, but more importantly, you can also tap it to give target 1-1 one, one creature plus 1 plus 2. This is huge, right? Take the Dragonfly. The Dragonfly is a 1-1 one, one flyer. You can give the first strike for 2 green. You may think, who cares about the first strike? Well, what if you use your Pendlehaven, make it into a 2-3, then use a Wailuli Wolf, make it into a 3-4. Then all of a sudden you have a 3-4 first strike through the air. Maybe you also have a Lightning Bolt. So you bolt before blocks, you bolt the creature, the Sarah Angel, let's say, and then there's a first strike damage coming in. Actually, you can even kill a Sheevan Dragon if you can make your Dragonfly big enough in combination with a Lightning Bolt or in combination with a Giant Grove. So there's just a lot of cool and, and fun combat tricks that you can do with with these pump cards which makes it really interesting i love these decks because combat is so important in them you know yes the start of the game usually takes some damage but then you have to start blocking at a certain point in the game and that's where it gets uh, interesting for me at least um a card that i'm missing in this deck is maze of if i really expected him to play with maze of if why because maze of if can be so good as an offensive card as well. Because let's say you attack with three 1-1 one, one creatures and your opponent has a 3-3 three, three blocker, right? And under normal circumstances, you would lose a creature every time you would attack. But what you can do with Maze of If is before damage is dealt, take the creature that's being blocked out of combat. That way you still deal damage, you don't lose a creature and you can do the same thing the next turn again. Now we do see two mazes in the sideboard. So I think, and again, I'm trying to 
to think that why Malta made certain decisions, which is kind of hard because I'm not Malta, but I think what he thought is there are also creatureless decks. There are also decks that just don't have a lot of creatures in them at all, or only bigger creatures like Shiva and Dragons and Mahamoti Jins. So the mazes are not really going to be useful for me in those matchups. So I'm going to put it in my sideboard. And when I'm playing against more creature heavy decks, then I can put it in my maze again. That's what I think. Again, I'm not trying to think as Malta, which is tough because I'm not, but that's why I think he put them in the sideboard and not in the main. Okay, um, just a lot of stuff happening here in this deck. I really love it. Uh, we already looked at the deck, deck of Audun. We now discussed the deck of Malta. That means we are ready for round number three of the Raging Bull series. I'm really excited. Let's get to the game. Game number one, here we go. On the left side, we have Audun with his red-blue fire deck with that modest black splash for Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. And on the right, we have Malta with his red-green aggro deck. Ooh, look at Audun go there in the upkeep of Malta, casting an Ancestral Recall. What a start for him here in game one, round number three of the Raging Bull series. And Malta here starting with his red-green deck, and he's playing one black card that is Mind Twist. Starting with the Lana Elves, pretty good start for him as well, passing the turn. Let's see what Audun can do here. There's a Volcanic Island tapping the blue. Ooh, a Soul Ring. This is a good start for Audun. Also a Lightning Bolt. This is maybe even the perfect start for Audun. This is going to be a rough matchup already for Malta. Remember, Malta wants to go faster than the opponent. Playing out here in Argovian Pixies 2-1 from Antiquities. All damage dealt to it by artifact creatures is reduced to zero and it cannot be blocked by artifacts. Let's see if we're going to see another, perhaps, a Bolt. Already five mana here for Audun. Is he going to cast, for example, a Suchi, tapping three here for a Granite Gargoyle? Actually a great card because it can block and the Factory and the Argovian Pixies. Although, of course, uh, Audun doesn't have any red open to pump the toughness of the Granite Gargoyle. Remember, it is a 2-2 flyer and for one red you can give it plus 0, plus 1. There's the double attack, so I'm not expecting any blocks here, to be honest. I think he's just going to take the damage. Ooh, he's not. He is going to block. I wonder what he's going to block. I think I would go for the factory. Okay, there's a bolt before damage is dealt. That means he is going to take some damage here. Two points of damage. Going to drop to 18. And let's see what Audun can do now. Oh, there's a Sheevan Dragon. Yeah, and this is a huge problem for Malta, you know. This is what I discussed briefly in the deck tech section. Again, I mean, Audun does have that ramp, you know, and this in this game in the form of that Soul Ring, it's just been a perfect uh, game number one here for Audun so far. This is going to be super, super tough here for Malta. Attacking here with, no, not attacking with the 2-2, playing a Wild Lily Wolf and then a Script Sprites. Could use that as a chump blocker for the Sheevan. And now, of course, Audun has to make a choice. Is he going to attack with the Sheevan or is he going to keep it at bay? I mean... He's got to be tempted to attack, right? Gonna tap. Ooh, gonna tap six again. Are we gonna see another Sheevan? Oh, a fireball. Oh, my goodness. This this game one is a slaughter fest. I mean, Malta needs a miracle to get back from this. There's the attack for five, by the way. Dropping to 15. There's the pass. Very confident swoop with the hand there from Audun, who must be feeling like a million bucks right now because this game is going exactly like you want it against these type of decks. For Malta, this is a horror scenario. Attacking for two, putting him on 15. There's the... Uh, there's the scavenger folk hitting the board. Nice uh, signed one. But this is just uh, horrible for Malta. Scavenger folk there is not going to do much. Of course, it can take care of the factory... Next turn, remember it now still has summoning sickness, but as soon as the uh, Mishra's factory gets animated, it could use the scavenger folk, sack it, destroy target artifact to kill the uh, the factory. There's the attack again for five, so it's probably gonna drop to 10 here. He's all tapped out, nothing he can do. Second main, playing out. Okay, I have no idea what that is, but he's playing out something. We'll just have to wait and see. We know it costs four mana, perhaps a gem they told. Let's see if he taps it, draws a card, then we know it's a gem they told. There are no proxies, by the way, at this tournament, so this is an altered card. A multi here going uh, through his hand, 
really in the tank, trying to find a way to survive. Looks like he's going to animate. And then attack, or wants to attack, I guess, with the 2-2, asking if Audun wants to respond to the animation. There's the attack with the 2-2. Are we going to see a bolt? Is he going to try to block it? Looks like he's going to animate to block, and now he's offering that option for Audun to use, uh, for Malta, I mean, to use the scavenger folk. And to destroy the uh, Mishra's factory. In response, there is a psionic blast on the uh, Mishra's factory here of Malta. Of course, he is still going to uh, lose that Mishra's factory of himself as well. And now he's going to untap. Let's see if he's going to use that altar to draw a card, because then we know it's a gem de tome. Or maybe he's going to attack with it. We'll <laughs> just have to wait and see what this card is, what it does. There's the attack for five. Oh man, he can actually pump it as well. Up to six damage. Gonna drop to four. Do we then see a Sayani Blast? Because then he's dead. No, we're gonna see an Icy Manipulator. Which is good, you know. Then, of course, he taps down the uh, exactly the dual land here. I mean, this game one has been absolutely a horror show for Malta. And even if Malta would have drawn like a perfect hand, I think he still would have lost. And there's the, uh, the pass. That's it, yeah, Malta saying there's nothing I can do here. He's gonna shuffle up, but this was a slaughterhouse in game number one, but both players are now gonna dive into their sideboards and we are going to catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go, and this time it's Malta on the play, which makes a huge difference for these aggressive decks. So he's got a much bigger chance, a much better chance, I should say, of making it into an actual game here, starting with a scavenger folk. Passing the turn. There is a city of brass and there's a bolt. But at least no soul ring here, no ancestral recall, so that's much better than in game one. There we see the factory passing the turn. No creatures for Malta though. That is a bit concerning. There's a Felwer Stone taking another hit from the city of brass. And now Malta can attack here, deal three points of damage, playing an ice storm instead. That's pretty good because Audun missed a land drop last turn. Taking care of the City of Brass could be important. There's a Bad Lance into a Granite Gargoyle. Now remember, the Gargoyle is a 2-2, but you can pump it up for one red, give it plus 0, plus 1. But Audun, of course, being tapped out. Okay, there's a Bolt, so he's taking care of business. Can hit him now for 4. And that's exactly what he does. For a moment there, I thought he passed the turn. I'm like, why would he pass without attacking? But he is attacking, of course. Both of these players are very experienced old school players. Again, no land drop here from Audun. This is looking much better for Malta here. There's a Pendlehaven. Would be great for him. Okay, there's a Fireball. Super aggressive here. Malta tapping out completely for that Fireball. Audun dropping to 9. That is a gutsy move here from Audun. Or sorry, from Malta. Wow. That is something I didn't expect to happen. What is he going to do now? There's a mace coming in from the sideboard, obviously. For those Shivan dragons, perhaps. Is he going to attack for four? I would be really tempted to. And of course, there's a risk that you're going to run into a bolt. So he's just going to attack with one. Doesn't want to lose both. Going to take the damage here. Dropped his seven. Going to take it out of combat after damage is dealt. No pump with the factory, by the way, from Malta. I would have expected... Malta to use the factory here to make the other factory a 3-3. I mean, each point of damage counts here. Audun with his back against the wall on 7 now. Malta still on 20. There's the attack again. So he's being very conservative. Going to put him on 5. Again, not pumping up. I wonder what the reason for that is. Is he simply forgetting it or is there some strategy behind it? Audu now on five, needs to find Lance. Okay, there's a uh, Black Lotus. Oh, into Shivan. Wow, just in the nick of time. Right now he's on five. There's a Fireball though. Too little, too late. Fireball winning game number two here for Malta. And I'm excited about that because it means we are going to go into game number three. Game number three. Here we go. Audu on the play, starting with the Volcanic, passing the turn. Who is going to win this match in round number three of the Raging Bull series? 
There's a Mox Emerald and a Factory into a Pixies. So that's good. Some early pressure here. Are we going to see a Bolt? There's the Bolt again. Audun finding those Bolts early in the game. That's very crucial to kind of take care of those early threats. There's a Time Walk. Oh, that is really good here for Audun. Because look at that. Now he's already on three. There's the Blood Moon taking care of that uh, Mishra's Factory. Blood Moon can be very difficult here to deal with. There's an Ice Storm, though. Taking care of that basic island makes sense because now Audun also only has mountains. Playing Chaos Orb, passing the turn. Interesting game number three now because of that uh, Blood Moon. That has a huge effect. This forest could be into, uh, important, although Malta, of course, already had that Emerald to make green mana. So Malta can pretty much play out anything he wants to, but uh, I guess he cannot find a threat here. Passing the turn. Also a pass from Audun. There's a Pendlehaven that's actually a mountain because of the Blood Moon. Remember that all non-basic lands are now mountains, so there are quite a lot of mountains in the game. There's a Mox Jet. Okay, there's a Granite Gargoyle. The 2-2 Flyer is back again, but it's gone with a quick bolt from Malta. Taking care of business. Okay, there's a creature, Lanawar Elves. So he can at least start attacking for one. There is another Gargoyle. Are we going to see another bolt? Another bolt. These bolts have been pretty, like, important in these matches. We've seen a lot of bolts from both players. There's the attack for one. So first blood, Audun dropping to 19. There's a City of Brass. Again, just a mountain because of the Blood Moon. I mean, you know, this is not too bad for Audun. You know, the longer the game takes, as, as soon as he's on six, he can start, you know, casting a Sheep and Dragon. And I'm pretty sure he boarded in the trike from the sideboard as well, because it's just so good against these weenie decks. So he's already at five mana, almost at six, you know. There's the other attack with the Lanawer from Malta, 17. There's a Dragonfly, Emerald Dragonfly. And um, it's a 1-1 one -one from Legends. For two green, you can give it first strike. It also flies. There is a double... Fireball here, man. Fireball was so good in game one, and now again it's a two for one here for Audun. So those fireballs are pretty good. There are the Pixies dealt with quickly by another bolt. So many bolts in these games. And again, I do feel this is good news for Audun. You know, the longer the game takes, the bigger his chances. And he's still on 17, which is a very comfortable life total to be at. Both players just passing the turns, though. There's a Script Sprites, 1-1 one, one Flyer. So again, a little bit of damage on the board here for Audun. But I mean, it's not doing a lot of work. It's doing a little bit of work, but not a lot. I guess if you're Malta, maybe you're kind of hoping for a huge Fireball at a certain point in the game. We've seen him doing that in, uh, in game two and uh, twice, actually. There's the tap down of the Sprites, so Audun doesn't take any damage. There's just the pass of the turn. Players playing pretty quickly, by the way, which is nice. There we have a Suchi 4-4. This is pretty big, you know, the Suchi. I haven't seen a single Suchi thus far. There's another Dragonfly. And I guess uh, Audun used the Icy there to tap down the Script Sprite, so the Script Sprite's probably tapped. Double Fireball. Again, taking care of business. Oh, this is nice. It's putting a Giant Grove on the, uh, the Dragonfly. So that means it's 4-4, and now it can also block the Suchi, so it's probably not gonna attack it with the, with the Suchi, although he can, of course, use the Icy to tap down the Dragonfly and attack for four. He's thinking about it. He's doing it. Going in for four and uh, putting Audu now on 16. Sorry, Malta on 16. So both players now on 16. There's the attack for one. Audun dropping to 15. I mean, things are not looking great for Malta because, I mean, the game is just way too far advanced. You know, that's not good for him. There's the attack with the 4-4. I mean, Audun has the bigger creatures in the deck, has some huge payoff cards as well that he can start casting. So he's going to tap down the, uh, the Dragonfly. There's a huge Fireball. I think the Fireball is really the road to victory here for him one two three four five six seven eight nine a fireball of nine here having ten mana so he's gonna drop to six exactly now this is what malta needs one more fireball 
Remember, he's used already two bolts, but he also plays with Chain Lightnings. Chain Lightning being a little bit risky because players can send it back. But I mean, Audun's not going to send it back because if he does, then he's going to die because then Malta can send it back. So that could be an interesting interaction if that happens. There's the attack for four. Malta dropping to eight. But this is quite... That Fireball has made this game into a very exciting game because now both players are quite low. You could say Malta has two more turns here. Attacking with the fly, getting... Ta oh, there's the Fireball. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it, winning here with the Fireball. But this was a very exciting match. It was so close for both players. I mean, look at that Ancestral Recall. I mean, Audun couldn't play it out because of that uh, that Blood Moon. And wow, wow, wow. And I also think a difference here is, and I understand Audun, it was definitely the right thing to do, but Audun had to use the Fireballs on the creatures, right? And Malta, he just had a one-track mind, which is what you have to do with this type of deck. It's fireball to the dome, to the dome, to the dome. <laughs> you know, that's what he did. That's what gave him the victory. Great match. This was round number three of the Raging Bull series. Now, if you don't want to miss a thing of this grand tournament, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Thank you for doing that. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you for supporting Timmy Talks by being a sub. Please also consider leaving a like, share this on your socials and leaving a comment. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then you can also become a patron, of course. So please consider becoming a patron as well. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for more information about that. It already starts with $1. And if you support Timmy Talks with just that $1, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.